tonight. Stop, stop, stop. Right, not your legs, now. Reckless riders who dice with death. Oh. Persistent bike thieves running the people of South Yorkshire ragged, putting themselves in mortal danger. Right, there's some bikes on the nose down there, look. If they do collide with a vehicle, they are going to get hurt, and they're going to get hurt badly. Roads across the moors and dales of South Yorkshire have long been a magnet for motorbikers of every shape and size. Off-road as well as on. It's joy tinged with tragedy. Motorbikes account for only 1% of all road users, but for 20% of road deaths. And that's not the half of it. The police here are being run ragged by joyriding kids on bikes. Most are barely in their teens. Kids who get their kicks by terrorising the people who live here. Yeah, what well, one, the lad is now pushing the bike, taking your next left and you'll be visual with him. He's in the middle of the road and he's uh, struggling to start it. It's becoming a growing nuisance. You can imagine that, you know, a typical pleasant Sunday afternoon, uh, you want to sit out with the family in the garden and then uh, a couple of hundred metres away, you've got these kids on usually stolen bikes, uh, no insurance, not wearing the correct headgear, etc. Motorbikes is a major problem at the moment. It's, uh, it's very high profile. It's getting to a stage where kids can't play on certain parts in Sheffield because there's too many motorcycles racing around. At the least, they're an antisocial uh, behaviour problem. At the most, obviously, somebody could get seriously injured. The police in South Yorkshire have had enough and have launched an operation to put those who steal, ride and endanger their neighbours as well as themselves out of business. But they can't chase them in police cars. We try not to pursue, if at all possible, only the very extreme cases where we engage in a pursuit. So it's vitally important that we get the US helicopter to, uh, to help us catch these people. Sierra Inc. 99, Roger, thank you. Could you lift, please, what a call from an officer? It's in relation to three off-road motorcyclists. If you could uh, lift, please, and I'll let you further details as soon as I get a direction and chop In the front line of this operation to stop these bikers is Sierra Yankee 99. Finding illegal or nuisance bikers isn't usually difficult, as long as you don't look on the main road. On the wrong trees, it's the next ones to the left. Tire, yeah, we've just got him. Okay, Tom. Yeah, just turn on to uh, a little bit of grassland behind the rear of Clipston Road. They're very hard to stop. They drive down alleyways, they drive around backs of vehicles, they drive on fields, um, into gardens and run over fences, and it's very difficult for you to catch when you're in a traffic car itself. Yankee 99 can follow the bikers from the air, high enough so they can't be heard or seen. Is it like in it? It's the prime police weapon in Operation Crackdown. He's done a, another left, he's on uh, Gainsford, I believe it is. 99 Nine is hovering a thousand feet over the heart of Sheffield. At least one of the bikes they are following has been stolen, and at least one of the pillion passengers isn't wearing a helmet. They have no idea 99 is onto them. Delta from Sherry, can I nine? Nine nine, Grad. Yeah, Roger, we've got visual with both, uh, in fact, all three of them. Uh, which one uh, Which one do you want us to stay with, over? Your guess for his mind, possibly the one with the pillion uh, fighter with no helmet. On board 99 are two police officers and a civilian pilot. Which grounded routine? Yeah. There's a group up here. The bikers are not being pursued by ground cops. The strategy for dealing with them in South Yorkshire is to follow them until they either give up or run out of gas. 
using the helicopter, you, you stand off away from the um, actual motorcycle. You take some of the pressure off. He's not got a police car following him, feeling a, a, a real urgent need to get away from this vehicle. Um, so the, a little bit of speed is taken off the, the follow. And we're in a position that we can better evaluate the situation and decide whether it's safe to continue or whether to just abort the pursuit altogether. If, uh, if an officer can go up onto Mather Road, I think they may do a left onto the fields again. This mission's backseat observer is PC Walls, a sky cop for more than six years. Last stop is a Fox Daring 99. It's an off-road motorcycle. It's not. Uh, it's not designed to be on the road. It, it's a, a 14, 15-year-old lad. He's no license. Never been trained to ride on a road. Uh, he's got a pillion passenger on that's got no nowhere for his feet to go. So he's got no foot pegs on there. So it is a dangerous, obviously a dangerous exercise. Do get worried for them because if they do collide with a vehicle, they are going to get hurt, and they're going to get hurt badly. Not wearing protective gear. Not wearing helmets. Generally just about. Go back onto, uh, onto Stanifers Road, he's on Hill Road, I believe, over. The boys on the yeah, bike right, still no don't know they're being caught on camera or that PC Walls is surrounding them with officers on the ground. 1474 from 99. Uh, they're actually at the uh, roundabout with the parkway. They're in the uh, in the subway uh, on the uh, Mather Road side of it. The boys now know 99 is onto them. But by hiding in the underpass, they are unwittingly giving the police a better chance of catching them. If, uh, if officers go the Greenwood Road side and then another officer uh, actually walks down into the subway, uh, you should uh, be able to catch them. They're all uh, underneath the, uh, the road itself. Of a... I mean, yeah, they were hiding from the aircraft. We couldn't see them because, obviously, they were underneath the, the underpass. There's only two exits. They weren't going anywhere uh, without us seeing them. Is it like in here? Yeah, dog handler from uh, 99. Uh, stop, stop, stop. Find on your left now. The containment hasn't worked. One bike is out and away. The one with the pillion passenger who hasn't got a helmet. Got him virtually. Yeah, there's still one underneath the subway. We'll stay with this, uh, this one that's uh, driven off. There's still one under the subway, which I think may well now have been detained. As the arrests begin, 99 now has less officers to help them catch their bike. Yeah, continue, uh, continue straight on. Uh, he's by the football pitches uh, with the school. It's lunchtime, and the riders are becoming even more reckless. They're riding through the grounds of a school, giving the crew video proof of dangerous driving. He rode through school grounds, uh, which in itself is, is obviously a dangerous, uh, dangerous thing to do. Your sole concern is. Uh, maintaining a, a good evidential picture on the camera. It's essential, that's why you're there, uh, so that if something goes to court, you've got the supporting evidence on film. Frederick Street area. He's gone through the school playground, and fortunately there's nobody um, out. But I don't think he would have changed his route had it have been break time and the playground full of children. If you've got the main, um, the main slope. The crew of 99 are worried. Operation Crackdown is supposed to put bikers off the road, not in hospital. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got good evidence for, uh, for dangerous as well at this stage of it. Watching me, watching you, watching me. As the uh, pursuit progresses uh, and seeing the level of risk taking increase, you have to start recalculating whether it's actually safe to continue. Yeah, this second bike but as 99 backs off, it's clear the bikers aren't going to slow down unless something goes wrong with their bike or it runs out of fuel. By continually riding where bikes aren't allowed, the lads are making life virtually impossible for the police on the ground. But there are first signs that their bike is beginning to feel the pace. Smile for the camera. Secure <laughs> right front left. Secure rear right forward. The teenagers aren't finished yet. They too have a plan. Yeah, Delta, unfortunately, we're still following this other motorcycle now, uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, just going you. into Bowden Wood at the moment. Anyone can see that was on route to the original the motorcycle that's now Bowden Wood area, the Powers Call sign. The woods might be thick, 
but Yankee 99's thermal imaging camera is up to the job. Motorbikes give off great hotspots. The thermal image does penetrate uh, through the, the canopy of the trees. Uh, it doesn't give us as much of uh, a picture, but we can still see uh, images. We can see, still see flash of heat that come through. The teenagers are again playing into the hands of the police. Another chance to surround them. If possible, could uh, some of the officers try and assist us to get this other one? Over. Roger, I'm coming up. Uh, I'm sure you can see we're coming up towards Enderbrother Parkway. I'll uh, yes, yes, get in there. Yeah, Roger, uh, if you want to uh, just make your way towards the edge of the wood, it's a difficult one, this. Needle in a haystack. PC Humphreys likes looking for needles in haystacks. It can be very difficult directing people um, in a, a wooded area. Um, you can't tell them to turn left at the next tree because they're surrounded by trees. Can we confirm this, uh, this kid on the bike is definitely still in these woods? One zero right hand kid. Where are you, mate? You're there. Yeah, Roger, we are picking a heat source, uh, which I know it might not help you, but it's uh, basically in the middle of the woods. The bikers have spotted the ground cops. Yeah, all officers is walking on the bike. Oh, they're still on the bike? Roger, they are. Go back up to... Uh, this game of cat and mouse has now reached the critical stage. Nine-Nine's crew know the bike must be low on fuel. They were obviously trying to get home. Uh, they'd been out on this bike for some time before we got overhead. Uh, they were obviously aware that uh, they were running out of fuel. If they are heading for home, the bikers know some unusual shortcuts. We rode through uh, a cemetery, obviously showing total disrespect for anybody that was in there, uh, any funeral, anything else that was going on there. Yeah, for all officers, uh, he's, on, uh, he's in some small uh, trees uh, at the bottom uh, of Clipston Road. They're now pushing it. They've run out of fuel. They're on Clipston Road uh, off uh, Greenland Road. Over. At last, Yankee 99 can spring a trap. Car's coming in from the bottom right, mate. There's a panda car just around the corner. Stop, stop, stop. Turn round. Turn round. Go back. First right, they're pushing it up towards you. The crew were right. The boys have headed home. Excess, excess from us, Yankees. Yeah, yeah continue down that road. There's a purple car on your left. Thank the you alleyway nice behind that purple car, they've just pushed it up there. Stop, stop. Cops are there. Roger. OK, we're going straight in. The reckless riders are now cornered in their own backyard. Yeah, 7-6 with uh, the two lads now. <laughs> yeah, what's your location? The lads will be in court tomorrow morning, charged with dangerous driving. But this afternoon, when Mum gets home, there's going to be hell to pay. In trouble with the law and guilty of ruining the washing. At the end of the day, they are young lads. Uh, the young lads that are wanting to enjoy themselves on a, on a bike. There's a time and a place to do that and on the roads uh, and public fields and school grounds isn't the place to do it. Last year, in South Yorkshire, 22 motorbikers died and 263 were seriously injured. The majority of bikes that we follow tend to be motocross-style bikes that aren't road registered, uh, therefore not designed for the road. They don't have lights, don't have uh, brake lights, don't have registration numbers and certainly don't have road legal tyres, which therefore don't give any grip on the road. It's back to base, to refuel. A chance for PC Humphrey to reflect on the rights and wrongs of trying to catch young men on the run. We need to really think hard about pursuit tactics. I was thinking like a big gladiator net. Yeah. And, Just don't... and you lean out with a gun and shoot a net. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he would not allow that. No, of course they wouldn't. Humphrey has spotted yet more kids on bikes. We were travelling back towards base, um, and in the distance, in the middle of a, an open field, backing onto a school, um, we could see a group of people um, that looked like they, they were on motorbikes. They shouldn't have been there. It was a weekend afternoon, um, and as I brought the camera around to look at them, 
Um, it was three lads with off-road motorbikes. One of the lads decided to uh, remove a, a bag of something from his trousers and discard it. No, it was that, definitely that. When we're coming home from a, a job, we don't just sit back and enjoy the in-flight movie. Y your attention's drawn, you're looking, you can see so much detail. Um, things do jump out to you. These lads are standing out in the middle of a field and one of them throws something. Um, you know something's wrong. You've got three motorcycles on the field. You're not actually dry, riding around at the moment, but uh, one of the uh, riders appears to have just thrown a small package, which obviously from this distance looks like drugs. What if you got any officers in that area, please? These two uh, friends um, decided they didn't want to uh, hang around, and they uh, they decided to leave the area. He jumped it before he knew we were looking at him. As we flew over, he was looking near behind us, and he jumped it. And he was walking towards it, and we turned around, and he walked away from it. Landing isn't an option. Ground officers are going to have to deal with this. But how long will the lad hang around? Control, any uh, mobile headless in area able to assist the area 99? This guy just laid there pretending nothing was uh, was wrong. He was just out sunbathing on the, uh, the school field. Um, all in the meantime, we were directing uh, resources towards him. The suspect is not just sunbathing. Like a growing number of people who find themselves under 99 surveillance, he's making a phone call. Yeah, he's not making any effort to uh, to run or move at the moment, so we'll uh, we'll remain with the aircraft. Uh, obviously, we just come here to stop him uh, making any move away of us. There is uh, two or three jips uh, that you've got to go down before you get to this lad. He's about 100 yards in front of the aircraft. The relaxed suspect has no idea there's a police car motoring up behind him. He's still on the phone, and 99 is down low. He's going to himself when he sees Axe. Can't hear it. Can't hear it, can he, because of us? Just, we're just blowing the drugs. Stand by. Unfortunately, that was always going to happen, wasn't it? Yeah. He doesn't know how it is, does he? <laughs> Excellent. Right. This you, mate. XSXS2 Sierra and K99. There's another urgent job. Not bikers, an emergency. There's been a bad road accident. A woman might have been killed after being hit by a car. The helicopter is needed. Sierra NK99, it's been a report of an RTC. Okay, we just need your assistance in uh, taking photographs at the uh, scene, if that's in order with yourself. Over. 99 carries a stills camera as well as video equipment. They often take aerial photos of crash scenes where there are deaths or serious injuries. The evidence we can produce is vital uh, for the coroner's office and any proceedings may take place you know, as to whose fault it was and, and whatever eventuality occurred. PC Tim Scudden is yeah, on the scene. Fire brigade, um, the uh, casualty has been got serious leg injuries. We've also uh, need desperately please another ambulance. We've got single carriageway road, uh, one vehicle trying to turn right stationary and someone who just weren't looking just crashed into the back of that vehicle. But the impacts bounced him off to the left over the pavement and he's hit two women and he's actually pushed one 20 feet in the air and over a wall down an embankment and landed in some trees. The other one was wedged against the, against the wall, so we got two quite serious injuries. OK, where's the RTC? All right, got you. All right. PC Walls will try and get the best overview shot he can to be used in evidence later if any charges are brought or the woman dies. They appear to be doing, um, they do a triangulation shot and then they'll circle all the way around and then they'll obviously look at doing a, an over the head total shot. It gives a good aerial view of exactly how the vehicles are finished up. If there is a fatality and it's much easier for people to look at a photograph than it is to listen to a description or look at it on a map. Back complete. Complete. Okay. There's good news. Paramedics have stabilised the woman. She's in a bad way, but they say she will live. 
I was quite surprised that someone to be hit and thrown that far from a car would, um, would suffer the injuries that she got and not got worse. It was a very, very serious incident. Sierra Yankee 99 returns to base to refuel and download the photos of the accident. While PC Walls reviews the evidence from the scene, another call is coming in. Bikers at it again. Status two, please. We've got a report of nuisance motorbikes in Rotherham area. If you could attend, please. Right, Yeah, please. Captain Mousset and his crew will have to act fast if they want to catch the bikers at it. Listen. Roger. And video recording from the rear, please. Roger. A traffic cop has spotted two young men riding what is believed to be a stolen scooter. Yeah, Roger, no problem. Nine Nine is in the nick of time. The lads have dumped the bike. The thieves are aged 16 and 17 and are wanted for other offences, including driving whilst disqualified. To be fair, what do you have a go? Sir, so, Yankee 99, do we have any mobile nearing treating yet, please? They don't know 99 is above. It's too high to hear. The teenagers are heading through a primary school. No sign of the children. They're in class. They uh, startled uh, a lot of uh, young children and, and school teachers as they jumped into a playground of a nursery, ran through the ground and climbed over the bottom fence. Um, a bit naughty, really. A bit upsetting for those kids. As the lads head into the countryside, the crew begin to realise that they're now going to be easier to follow, but harder to catch. We're sort of gradually shepherding them away. As always, the name of this game is to surround the fugitives. Going a bit closer? Yeah, please. I'm just going to have a yeah. look at the path. Easier said than done. Alpha from Sierra 99. Uh, do you want to just update us, please? Yeah, confirmed stolen this bike. Stolen yesterday. The VRM of Sierra 428. X-ray kill tanker. The situation has taken a turn for the worse. This is Sheffield's main railway line, and no one knows when the next train's due. It is a live railway line that they ran across um, and ran along for some time. Uh, it's quite dangerous to go on, uh, obviously, on a live railway line. The railway bridge is also a danger for the crew. They jumped over the edge of the fence and then tried to get away. We thought at that point that they were actually going to hide underneath the railway bridge, uh, but they didn't, they just continued anyway. This bridge is only a means to an end, a way out onto South Yorkshire's moors. Over in the two o'clock. As the scooter thieves head ever deeper into the countryside, Nine Nine's crew start to wonder why. They've run for more than two miles so far. It's not normal that people just set off running across fields. Um, if anything, it's uh, totally opposite, because most people try and stay in the built-up areas where they can get a bit of cover and hide away from us. Captain Mousset can't even hover and deplane his Skycops out of the back. This is marshland. It's simply too wet, too dangerous. Do we know how far off the road are? The runners seem to have changed direction and strategy. They're now using their mobile phones and trying to find a vantage point so they can see exactly where they are. Yeah, one, one, just take your uh, next left, next left, and continue uh, onto the dirt track. This is the first time that the teenagers are running out of ideas and options. People get disorientated when they're on the ground in open areas that they've probably never been on before, but they know the, the larger area, if you like, but not necessarily the small area that they're, uh, that they're running through but then to be on the phone asking for somebody to pick them up, they must have had an idea where they were. Yeah, 99, as you get to the very end of that track, you've got some big black uh, wrapped bales of hay. Officers on the ground are closing in, but they're not yet close enough. Yeah, as you can see, these lads have legged it again back into the open fields, uh, 
in between the railway line and uh, Treaton. Uh, do we have any other officers available to uh, try and corral these, please? Corralling the lads is something else that's easier said than done. But they have now run almost three miles. <laughs> it was quite some way. They'd, uh, they'd, they'd run a fair way, so they must have been quite tired. So uh, they must have been quite fit, yeah, to have gone the, the distance that they did. Tango, Tango 9, I'm on Platts Lane. Uh, where do you want me to go? I'm reversing back there. Uh, all the time, obviously, we're overhead, we're videoing and monitoring these uh, these two lads. We're directing other officers to try and intercept them. 9-9 nine, nine to the traffic car. If you continue now on foot to the very end of that path ahead of you, you'll come on top of the pit stack uh, in front of these lads. I want you to stay at the bottom, just out of view. Have a... PC Humphrey is setting an ambush. Brilliant. Yeah, 99, nine, these uh, lads have dropped down the uh, side of the embankment back towards uh, Flats Lane. What are you looking? Up that road. Go that, go that road. Yeah, 99 nine, to the uh, traffic hole now just entering uh, Flats Lane. Uh, if you go uh, beyond the two burgundy cars, you've got a track uh, 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 next left. They're coming out in air. Stop, stop, they're coming out in front of you now. The ambush isn't quite working the way PC Humphrey wanted. Yeah, nine, 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 they're, nine, they're in the they're gardens, in the gardens. <laughs> they're in the they're very left-hand left house. If you can continue, continue to the farmhouse. Trying to break into the farmhouse is a mistake. It's given time for the ground cops to catch up. Yeah, nine, 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 to the nine, 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 but for one of the lads, at least, there's one last desperate roll of the dice. They then split up due to the fact that we'd got officers uh, more or less containing the area. Officer in the yellow vest, is it? Is it the guard into your side now? He's out behind you. One ran um, perhaps about another 200 yards away from the other one, uh, tried to hide in, in bushes. Right now we've got lovely tape. Uh, dog handler, if you continue down the track road uh, towards the uh, parked up traffic car, you've got a substation on a pole. Uh, is at the base of that. Come on, John. Come out the front, he's back near the white rails. This on Tango Alpha 1 1, come to him 1 this day. Yes, we've got this you on the second. Got him, mate, yeah. yeah. 9-9, nine, 9-9, nine, 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 interrupting. We now have the second youth detained, thank you. It was a good pursuit from our point of view, uh, obviously, it, and a good uh, a good ending to that as well. Excess from Sierra Yankee 9-9, nine, nine, uh, to all officers involved in this one, thanks very much for your efforts, uh, a job well done. In the UK, 70 motorbikes are written off every day. On average, 550 bikers are injured each week. As long as this statistic continues, so will Operation Crackdown. The juvenile driving the motorbike was given a court order and a driving ban. The two youths on the run were charged with stealing a motorcycle and disqualified from driving. They don't have any thought for other people apart from themselves, and they are a danger to the public. Great. We're here to cast these people and get and remove them from the bikes.